Jesus, the Holy Son of God, had been sent to serve and save those who receive his message of eternal hope. Led by the Spirit of God into the desert, 40 days of prayer and fasting had prepared him for that which was to come. The earthly ministry he would soon begin, a journey destined to blend of joys and sorrows. In this wilderness experience, Jesus had remained faithful and had not faltered in the face of Satan's temptations. Jesus began his ministry by, call, by calling his disciples. He passionately taught them and others, providing hope and healing to all who would listen. Com compiling messages of grace and love inspired people from every walk to heed the master's call. Turn from the sinful ways and follow him. He was the way and he was the truth and the life. This was Christ, the living rock on which all persons could stand and build their faith in the living God.
Jesus and the expanding presence of his devoted followers over the three-year span of his ministry did not go unnoticed. By religious leaders and political leaders of his day, there was rising concern among those about this man and what they perceived to be false portrayals of the truth of faith. Amidst Christ's clarion call for people to turn and follow him, Winds of change were beginning to blow. Growing unrest was evolving into evil plots to undermine and end the influence of this teacher, the humble man from Galilee. Amen. 
Large crowds often gathered around Jesus simply to hear him, to hear his teachings, or to observe his miracles. It was now time for the Jewish Passover, and again, Jesus was surrounded by a large host of devoted followers. As he prepared to enter Jerusalem for the holy festival, the people shouted their praise for all that they had witnessed through him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel. The fine religious leader said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Tell them to silence their voices. But Jesus responded, I tell you this, if they keep quiet, the very rocks themselves will cry out in praise. Passover festival, Jesus gathered his disciples to share a Passover meal. As he shared with them in this intimate gathering, he took bread and the cup, offering it to them, saying, Take this, eat and drink in the remembrance of me. It was a foreshadowing of the hours which were soon to come. Following the meal, Jesus went to Gethsemane to pray. In agony, he prayed to his father for strength to walk the path which, he, which was before him, a path that would lead to abandonment and rejection by his closest followers, a path that would lead to false accusations by those he had come to save, a path that ultimately would lead to his death. In the darkest and loneliest of, the, of hours, in the midst of an agony and de deepest despair, Jesus reflected the resolute, resolute comments, commitment, much like he had revealed in the desert, the desert of temptation to fulfill the plan he had been called to do. He was truly a rock in a desert of shifting sand.
consensus had been reached, the religious leaders had agreed that crucifixion upon a cross was the appropriate sentence. Having secured the needed governmental approval, Jesus was led to Golgotha, the place of the skull, to be crucified. In a final act of submission, Jesus was nailed to the cross to die a criminal's death. Standing beneath the cross, the faithful few who witnessed his final hours and heard his final words of confirmation deep in their souls that this was indeed the Christ, the precious cornerstone of their faith, now torn from the earth, very foundation.
As evening approached, a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph came to bury the body of Jesus. Having received permission from Pilate to do so, he took down the body, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb, one he had carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a large stone in front of the entrance. Concerned that the followers of Christ may, fo may try to attempt to steal the body and tell others that he had been raised from the dead, Pilate ordered that the tomb be secured by placing a seal on it, with guards stationed there to ensure that nothing would happen. It was now early morning on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and some of the other women made their way to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. As they approached the tomb, they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the tomb?
For how many of you was that a brand new message? You didn't know that story. Was there anybody that that was like totally new and you're like, oh my gosh, that's really, really cool. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I thought. Another question very similar to that. How many of you have neighbors within three houses or apartments in any direction where they either don't really know that story or don't really believe that story. How many of you have neighbors like that? Would you raise your hand, raise your hand? That you, you speculate. And some of us are like, well, I'm not sure I know my neighbors well enough. And that's a lot of hands, right? So here we are. We know the story, and uh, we have this great obligation to, uh, to do something about it. So if, if this is something where, no, that wasn't a new story, but you want to recommit to living that out, what a wonderful place to be. You've heard the story. Yeah, I, I talk about it, but now you've heard it sung. The reality of Jesus' life and death and resurrection for us is powerful, powerful, powerful. And so maybe you want to recommit to that and say, God, I, I want to accept that. I want to believe that. I believe that's for me. And I want to follow Jesus even more. Uh, on the other hand, you may say, you know what? Um, I've, I'm living that. I love the Lord. I, want to, I, I, keep, I, I just want to keep going. And now, Lord, who should I be able to share that with? Who can I share that with? We've been talking about loving our neighbor, Luke chapter 10. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what we've been talking about. Now, what in the world? How No stone could hold Jesus, and then we accept that, no, his resurrection shows that his, his words were true. He predicted that he would raise from the dead. He did because the God the Father loved him, knew that the sacrifice were for, was for you and me. We have the, that personal opportunity to accept him. And then we get to turn around and say, okay, now who else needs to know? Who needs to know that love of Jesus? Who else is our neighbor that we get to share with? In the Bible, we see all these great leaders of the faith where they, they had the Old Testament that had taught them to do this, and now they see it lived out in their midst with Jesus loving us so much that he gave his life for us. And then he says, now go and, and love one another as I have loved you. The roots of all of that were in the, the Old Testament, including the book of Proverbs. Just two scriptures for today for you to, to look at later on throughout the week. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. I'm just going to leave us with that word. Do not withhold the good from those to whom it is due when it was in your power to act. We heard the choir declare, Jesus, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, there he is praying. He knows he's going to be tortured and killed. He, and in his flesh is his body. He doesn't really want that to happen. He says, Father, let this cup pass from me. But if it's your will, if that's what I need to do, then I'll do it. And he accepted that, and he did it. He laid down his life for us. And he says, go and do likewise. Well, we have neighbors, we have friends, we have people that we know that are, are in need of that great good, of knowing that, that reality, that story that is real and true, of what Jesus did, and they need to know that we love them. And here we are, we have that opportunity. So that front picture on the bulletin, you may have been like, well, that's a little silly. That's a funny TV show, you know, home improvement. Well, I wanted to leave that in your minds, thinking about what you just heard from the choir declared. Somebody on the other side of the fence needs to hear. Somebody needs to know. They, the only Christians they may know are people that have been obnoxious or people that have strange theological ideas that are kind of cultic or, you know, maybe uh, mistreated them or, or weren't really true friends or only cared about them if, if the other people agreed with them. And yet, here you are, you're on mission, you're there in your neighborhood, and you get to look over the fence and say, who else needs to know that that stone couldn't hold Jesus? He's raised from the dead, he's real, he's here. Who else needs to know? And so first I'm going to pray for us individually, and then I'm going to pray for us all together that we're going to receive and then share that wonderful truth that we have just heard and celebrated. Let's pray. Lord, help us to accept what you have done for us. Help us to admit that we need it and accept it for ourselves. That that risen Jesus died for us. He raised from the dead for us. He's prepared a place in the presence of Almighty God for us. And he said, where I go, I prepare a place for you. Lord, we want to be there with the Lord forever. And so help us to accept your love for us, Lord. 
and your forgiveness. And then, Lord, as we leave from this place in a few minutes after we've given and of our offering and of our voices, we pray that then we would give our lives for our neighbors, that those people living close to us will feel loved and cherished because of your love for us. Even when they irritate us, even if they're doing things that are against you, Lord, help us to love them, invite them into our lives, invite them into our conversations, invite them into our church. And in this Easter season, help us to be people of your love. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, Amen. Amen.